of hearing ordinance number 18-12 to amend the allocations of multi-county park revenue within Darlington County under the agreement to govern the Darlington Farms Industrial Park dated April 21st, 2016 with respect to the project Wataga and authorizing other related matters such as reading. Does anyone wish to speak on public hearing ordinance number 1812? If not, I declare public hearing ordinance number 1812 closed. We'll now call to order. Mr. Douglas, would you do the indication? All farmer, which I inherit, Lone Corey and other lost the farmer. Well, I want to thank you, Lord, for a last night rest and a favor to it from Lincoln and love this morning. And Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for starting us on a new day and closing in our right mind. And we ask you today, O Lord, to bless each and every one that has attended the day, O Lord. And we can ask the blessing of the one that could attend and did not attend. Father God, we ask that you today, O Lord, to go to the homes, the hospitals, wherever the sick is, O Lord. Father, we ask that you to touch them, O Lord. Father, we know that you have a power there and none of And Father, we ask that you today, O Lord, to go to some foreign countries, touch our boys, girls, men and women. Give me the full sign of seeing them coming home one day. And Father God, we ask that you today to lead us and guide us to this meeting. In your name, say, Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. concern that I have is that uh, we have some standing water in the ditches uh, on uh, Pleasant View Drive and uh, we were supposed to have that spray just like to know uh, have they done that yet. Out of all the, how many calls you received? 1,268. Out of over 1,200 calls since the storm about mosquitoes, they sprayed 400 miles, and they have about 350 to 400 more miles of spray. We'll have sprayed as much after the storm as we did all year, and according to the contractor, they've covered almost the entire county already, and then they'll use those miles to go back, take a break there for a week, two weeks, so that they don't just spray it all one time so they get the new larvae hatching, and they're also throwing larvicide as they go, so they are spraying. We pay for quite a bit of additional spray and so forth. And, but it's cheap and double check, make sure it's on the list. Go ahead. Well, this gentleman is my neighbor. And uh, what I see that I have been standing before y'all for a number of years, that's the way. And this is our problem for what he's speaking of. And what the gentleman just stated is that we in town, for my area, nothing, nothing. That's what I'm saying. It's shame for the number of years that this annexation plan been in existence, and we've been doing the that. You can't go outside. Tell them about the mosquitoes. We was told that Friday and Saturday they was coming. Nothing. Look like sometimes somewhere something ought to come to something. But for the number of years, nothing. Why? Nothing. Because we are not in the plan or the system that run in the area that we live. Why we got to be neglected for a new school, a new courthouse, anything, everything, everywhere. But we have been neglected. We can see why South, the city of Hartford have done what they've done to degrade a certain area. We look like we just annexed into that degrade. When, where, how, 
that we got to continue this path that my area is going through. And the media cannot say anything about it. Anything and everything they can write about it, but can't not say anything about the downgrading of my area. Why? I pay taxes. I pay good taxes. Not no two dollars. Not no two hundred. I pay taxes. And nothing. Why? And that's one of the good reasons right there. The media cannot print. All right. Thank you. And this is something that I find. You can pass it around and welcome. You see why. All right, let's, let's move forward to the Senate agenda. Receive the information. So we receive the information for Senate agenda item 6A. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. 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 <coughs> Approval of minutes 7 8. <coughs> regular meeting September 10th, 2018. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. All opposed? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, I'd like to amend the, uh, make a motion we amend the agenda at this point for executive session items to this part of the agenda. Yes. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Chairman, I move we go into executive session in reference to items 15A, 15B, and 15C and bring whatever personnel needs to come in. Second. Second, Second Ms. Thomas? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. We don't need five minutes. No, looking at all right. Great. Thank you. All right, we're out of executive session. No action was taken. We will move forward to the committee report. I have none other items. Eleven A of form to board the commission to fill vacancy in the fire turn. We need to back up to number eight. Forty-two. Eight eight forty. Okay, that's good. Feel good. Yes, sir. That's polite. No, that's okay. I'm doing. No. Making me look. Feel like I'm old, but I am. 8A, <laughs> ordinance number 18 alt 9, an ordinance approving and ratifying the inclusion of a site location in Marlboro County and a multi county industrial park agreement with Marlboro County and other matters related thereto. This is third reading. You can find it on page 37. I move the approval. Any second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Choice. Ordinance number 18-10, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 18-04 for a supplemental appropriation to the library fund to receive and expend state library grant funds for Darlington County Library System and establish the effective date of this <coughs> ordinance. Third reading, I move to highly approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 8C ordinance number 18-11. An ordinance developing a multi-county park with Lee County authorizing the execution and delivery of an agreement governing the multi-county park, authorizing the inclusion of certain property located in Darlington County in the multi-county park, authorizing the execution of intergovernmental agreement and other matters related there to second reading i move for approval second any discussion all in favor say aye aye all, all opposed ayes have it 8d ordinance number 18-12 to amend the 
allocation of Mudder County Park revenue within Darlington County under the agreement governing the Darlington Park Industrial Park dated April 21st, 2016, with respect to Project Matica and authorizing other related matters. Second reading. Need a motion? Move. So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Bet. Resolutions. Resolution number 695. A resolution approving the waiver of all planning and or building fees for property affected by Hurricane Florence. Move the ratification. Any second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, aye. Have no community reports. Other items. Appointments to boards, commissions to fill vacancy and expired terms. Page 94. I need a carryover. Flowers is not here, so I'm assuming he's going to carry over. Miss Nichols is not here, so I'm assuming she's going to carry over. Mr. Brown. On the uh, airport commission, I did speak with Ricky Atkinson. Uh, he is interested and in, wants to serve. I did address the uh, number of attend uh, meetings attended and told him that uh, going forward, uh, my understanding of this committee meeting that addressed attendance. So it's a high priority, and uh, so at this point, I'd like to recommend uh, Mr. Atkinson for reappointment. Need a motion? Need to the job. He's made that. Uh, need a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. Say aye. And I carry over on the alcohol drug uh, committee, carry over on the board of adjustments, and then for the planning commission. I'd like to recommend Mr. Bob Pichel, and that's spelled P-U-E-C-H-L. Bob's a recently retired uh, Sunoco employee. Uh, Bob <coughs> moved around a number of times with Sunoco in uh, various positions and also served uh, in Indiana on economic development boards and is real interested in serving the community. I had a meeting with him today. He has thoroughly reviewed the minutes. Uh, all of these did a very thorough homework. Uh, this is a unfilled uh, term, so I think this expires sometime in 2019. But uh, I'm that uh, to have Mr. Pichel agree to serve. So at this point, I make a motion we uh, accept Mr. Bob Pichel. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, <clears throat> by the hands. Mr. Coker. Carry mine over, please. Carry over. Okay. 11B contract agreements and memorandum for understanding with Clemson University Cooperative Extension Service for Stormwater Education and Public Involvement Program, page 115. Move the approval of the agreement. Second. Second. Any discussion? It's my understanding we're going to put $5,000 into this. Either three or five. Three. Three. Okay. It's worthwhile. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. Let me see. Eastman to Duke Energy Progress, LLC, property at Darlington Library. We need a motion. Make a motion to be set. Second. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, is this an underground line? We're just talking to Mr. Eflin about how to identify exactly where this is. I believe, because isn't there a one pole on the side of the street there between the library and the corner where they're cutting down the trees and pushing it back? He's going to go out and look tomorrow, but this was a pushback on where the street's being moved back, so right. we don't really have a choice. We could argue, but <laughs> um, but he looking at the map, he couldn't clearly identify exactly where this was. Okay. <coughs> so he's going to do that tomorrow, great. Right? Right. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. Administrator, update. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things, and then I'm going to ask our emergency services coordinator to come up and talk with the emergency management coordinator. It had been inquired last time who was on the finance committee. Um, since a new finance committee had not been appointed this year, we use the same committee unless the chairman of the council so appoints a different committee. And the previous finance committee was um, Chairman Bobby Hudson. Mr. Danny Douglas 
and Mr. Lewis Brown, and then of course the county auditor, the county treasurer, and the county finance director and the county administrator are sitting on that meeting. So we would like to get with those three councilmen immediately after this meeting to find what your schedule looks like. So in the next couple of weeks we can have such a meeting to review and go over the audit. We'd have to get y'all scheduled when you would like to meet. Um, so that's the finance committee. Uh, I will tell you about we did an invitation for all the elected officials from the cities, the school district, and the state delegation that on October 10th, if they are not familiar with the problems at the courthouse, they are certainly welcome to come between 3 and 5. And between Scott Soves, the clerk of court, and myself, we were going to show them issues with the courthouse. So since they are elected officials in Darwin County, they'll have an idea and a little more first-hand knowledge of what some of the problems are there at the facility and why the county is seeking to request funds from the public to fix the facility or to replace or refurbish, since that's not totally decided, the facility. Um, it gives them an idea of what you're dealing with at that facility. Um, so that's October the 10th from 3 to 5. Um, that courthouse report that we talked about earlier, or last time, we had a tentative meeting scheduled for the Monday or Tuesday after the hurricane. Of course, that didn't happen. We're still in full operational mode here. Spoke with them last Monday about rescheduling that meeting. As of today, the they've not given the date. So we still don't have those reports back. We have some of the material, but it is not in a presentable format. It's, it's, it's not complete, not accurate. Um, as soon as we get that, I will have that delivered to you. You've got some information on your emails. I believe one or two of you were having trouble with your county email. Um, the clerk prepared a way for you to check your emails and instructions. And if you have any trouble with your email, please let us know because um, the clerk does send out emails and she wants to update you on something real quick. So we want to make sure you're able to get those emails to get updated information. All right, Ms. Molly Oden. She's our emergency management coordinator. She and the emergency service director, Mr. Bowler, are very instrumental in our operation during the storms, of course, along with the sheriff's department, fire department, multiple other entities. I'll sit here for 10 minutes and name them all. She can give you a very, very brief synopsis of some of the preliminary information we have. Um, and it is all preliminary. We've gotten some figures together, but they're all preliminary. And until we're finished with our documentation, a final official report is not, not ready. So I'm going to let her go ahead and give you some information she has. Since the storm, we started doing surveying. Um, was that Terry Cribb and Kyle Johnson out that Monday afterwards on the 17th to start identifying areas where we needed to go and look, um, make sure that there were no homes that were isolated being able to get out because of the flood water. Um, through the duration of the event, we were able to start planning and actually going out and sending teams on that Friday, the 21st. They did damage assessment projects where they walked the streets of different neighborhoods and inquired with the homeowners what kind of damages they had, what kind of figures we were looking at to send FEMA. And that led us so that we could plan to meet with FEMA and South Carolina Emergency Management on this past Thursday. This was for individual assistance, helping homeowners to be able to make repairs to their homes as a result of damages from the storm, whether it was wind or water related. Um, from that, we really rode the county and we showed them the different areas that we had identified that had damages. Um, just a sampling of what we were able to find, they determined that we had 12 homes that had been affected where water just left a water line, maybe it was under the crawl space or near there. Then we had 32 that they identified as minor and that was actual water in the living space of the home. 21 that had major, major damages where they speculated that the water line was either 18 inches into the home or greater and then one that we found that was totally destroyed. Those numbers do not necessarily reflect our actual damages. That's just a sampling of what FEMA found for them to make a determination. And we're still waiting as of this afternoon. FEMA had not made a decision on a declaration yet. As far as public assistance goes, that helps us with our infrastructure damages. Um, the county identified thir excuse me, 23 county roads that had damages. These are roads that Darlington County has the responsibility of keeping repaired. Most of those were all washouts, and most of them have been repaired. We still have, I think, four roads that need to be fixed. Two now. Two now. Um, and those were roads that still have water standing on them. Um, we had several properties that received damages. Um, 
about five of them, the 911 center, the entryway at the detention center, um, the garage space at the Darlington Library, and a portion of the building in the old voter registration building had roof leaks, and then the basement of the courthouse flooded. So those will all be things that we can turn in on the insurance and that if we get a declaration for public assistance that covers those expenses, we'd be able to recover 75% of that deductible cost. Um, we had two vehicles from the Sheriff's Department that were damaged by trees falling on them, one of which was occupied at the time that those fell. Um, our greatest damage that the county faces for our infrastructure is the dam at Lake Darpo. We speculate that with the cost that would be for supplies, labor, having to get an engineer to come in and assist with those repairs, we estimate that those damages are about $120,000. Um, we did a preliminary damage assessment on Friday with the FEMA representatives that came in the area and riding around we looked at some of these damages as well as several others that include um, applicants from the City of Hartsville, um, Center Theater, the Water Department, Darlington City, Lamar City, Darlington City, and Palmetto Rural Fire Department. And collectively with all of our damages that we reported that came in at $489,000 but that includes all the building and equipment at the deductible price of $1,000 for each claim. So if you put in the actual damages that we incurred, it would be well over half a million dollars. Um, we have received the declaration so far for emergency protective measures. Darlington County's costs right now are, about, are estimated at being about $130,000. And with that, or that declination that we've already received, FEMA would reimburse us for 75% of that. Um, a couple of other things that maybe have been mentioned or asked about, there are a couple of state roads that are still closed in Darlington County, one of which is US 15 at the intersection of Old Camden Road. It still has standing water on it. DOT is having to pump that water off the road. So once the water is completely out of the way, they'll send an engineer to test the integrity of that section. And once it is confirmed that it's safe, that intersection will reopen. The bridge at New Hope Well Road, right below the church, has washed out right at Black Creek and they do not speculate when that road will be reopened because of the extensiveness of the repairs. Um, our next step is we will have an applicant briefing coming up this month that FEMA, or excuse me, SCEMD will schedule and then from that point we'll just keep following up hoping that we get the individual assistance and public assistance declarations that we need. I was going to clarify that <clears throat> we have public assistance on emergency protective measures of so the law enforcement time, the fire department time, the EMS time, the time for people to operate in the EOC, we will get reimbursement of 75% of that. In numerous events for a number of years now, the state has come in and supplied the additional 25% so that we've received 100% reimbursement. But again, that's my guarantee, but it has been the recent practice and tradition for the state to come in and do that. So we're hoping for that as well. Um, but we are still plugging for the individual assistance so that the individual homeowner would be able to get some assistance direct from FEMA. Um, and that is not, that's not been finalized yet, but we understand our sales Florence and... Our sales in Florence is the, the last County. of the open app. Yeah, right, so Sumter County was going um, There was a third Lee county. Lee and Sumter aren't pushing that They're hard. not pushing. That's the last time I spoke, but then Williamsburg County may still be trying to get some assistance. We're still working to, to see that through, and I, I think there are a number of different individuals working to see that through, but we have to wait for people to make that designation. So, is it okay if I ask the question? Yes, okay. So we have less than 100 homes throughout the whole county? That we've identified. That doesn't mean that there aren't more, but as far as us sending out teams during the day, um, if a resident was working or unable to answer whenever we were knocking on the door, um, we relied on them calling us. We did get a good response from our public shop publicizing a uh, public information line where people could report their damages. And from that, we probably received a total of somewhere between 75 and 100 homes that were damaged. But we speculate that there could still be more, just people that did not let us know. Um, some homeowners, if they have insurance and they don't intend to seek any kind of assistance from FEMA or other sources, they don't typically report their damages to us, so we don't get an, a real number to go from. But those that have called in and said, I've got a problem, or those that we saw or identified during emergency response, they made the list to be looked at. Uh, but if somebody didn't call and 
it didn't say, well, I had a siding blown off my house, then we might not know that. So we would go to a neighborhood where somebody did report their damages, and then we would so still. that's how you assess the yes, damage? Yes, ma'am. Um, FEMA, when they're riding through, they do what's called a windshield survey, where they look from the car, and they look for the water line on the home, and based on where that water line is, they can mark whether it's major, minor, or affected. Um, and several of our homes, we were able to look at, um, in our county, there's a lot of mobile homes. If the water line is above the skirting of the mobile home, they go ahead and mark that at least as minor. If it goes into the home, then they mark it as major. So just by us riding and doing the windshield survey, if they could see a water line above the skirting, they went ahead and counted that as minor. Okay, I just have some more questions. I'll, I'll talk later, but I, you know, rather than taking up some time, more time, but I do have some. <laughs> Any other questions for Ms. Logan? Thank you very much. And I believe that's all I have for you to see. All right. I just wanted to uh, commend the administrator and the entire emergency staff um, in the way the hurricane prep and afterwards has been handled. I, I was I was tremendously pleased. I, I, I came as an observer just to kind of learn something and I was blown away at the professionalism and, and uh, the way our administration and our staff work hand in hand with the sheriff and the fire department and it made me feel really good that we got capable professional people running our county and I appreciate it. I also wanted to uh, recognize Mr. Strong and the Sunoco executive team and, and the proactivity of getting the council, getting the county people involved and ahead of the storm and prepping the area and just making sure and showing genuine concern over the, over our community. And I appreciate that. Um, I just, it was, it was really nice to see. Thank you. I have a problem. Cool house. Yes, sir. When is we going to ever get something done and get straight and do something about that cool house? We just keep pouring money in. Pouring money in. As soon as these reports come back, I'm going to give them to you for a work session of where do you want to go. But I think one thing you may be waiting on is to decide for if the public is going to approve funds from tax revenue for you to do what you can do with that how much money you have to work with, but <laughs> there are quite a few issues. But. And another one I got, that shop down there, what good is that shop to us? You gotta have somebody take care of the vehicles. However, we are still working on that proposal um, to make sure that if we go renting vehicles or leasing vehicles, excuse me, that we are saving the taxpayers money or at the very least, we're not spending extra money just to have newer vehicles. Mm -hmm. And we keep going back and forth with some questions and some details. Because what is worked in other counties don't, doesn't necessarily relate exactly to us. Because we already had some savings in place that one particular county did not have. And then some other counties are using that same leasing program through enterprises with newer. You can lease direct from Ford, you can lease from all over the place. Um, some of them use them to a scale back model. And they still maintain some shop activity and that's probably where we're going to be is for vehicles but we're going to have to maintain some type of shop for our yellow iron all of our heavy equipment landfill operated equipment um, mm -hmm. so that we do but that's that's where we're headed but not quite ready to give your proposal to tie up funds year after year just yet the smaller as that was and it's the cop that pays before i left we least be in society here that one I'm pretty sure it will be advantageous for us to lease some of our county vehicles, maybe not all of them, some of them, sure. We'll make sure the numbers are right. <laughs> I don't want to talk you into something or, or put something before you and, and, and advocate for it, and two years from now we go, well, uh, we just spent way more money than we thought we were going to spend. Well, how does that be throwing a bunch of money in that shop? And they ain't getting nothing doing that and sit out in Spain and they don't work on nothing, but I mean, that is waste of money. understand. I'm thinking. 
I just want to echo what David had to say. I, I was part of meetings early on. And, uh, I can't say enough about the professionalism. Uh, the communication started out with two of our largest employers, with Duke and Sunoco, and, and I think more than anything else, the compassion and the concern for not just employees or the selfishness about the business, but you know, the, the enormity of the project itself. People will not understand until you really start talking about billions of gallons of water that pass through in a day. And this storm, if nothing, we don't learn anything else, we can't take a Category 2 hurricane for granted. Matthew caught us off guard. We all think about Hugo. We're only going to get hurt if it's a Category 4 or 5. But when a meteorologist tells you the storm's going to dump 20 inches of rain, we Sunoco, people realize when that lake was dropped, there was a lot of speculation that this had been done and that had been done. This was an act of God. And it was, Chesterfield got 22 inches of rain. Well, I've started digging into, when you start looking at the watershed, at the head of Lake Robinson, and the conversations we had about the water coming into Lake Robinson, Lake Robinson is four and a half times the size of Preston. That water's coming downhill. It's, and it's a simple math. It's, and, understanding what the capabilities with the amount of conversations that went place of monitoring two flows of water to protect the community was taken with a tremendous sense of urgency and i was extremely impressed and very proud of the people that were involved in that end and then like david i came over to the to the facility here not to be heard but to observe and I tell people all the time what I saw was professionals in their element. Mr. Stewart came here. I saw the first thing he did was instruct to get a hydrologist on call because we don't know about how we're going to handle this much water. And I, I'm extremely proud of the way everybody involved. And there's too many people in that room. I wouldn't name individuals, and several of them are here, but I would be remiss because I would miss a few names. But I walked away very impressed, and I learned a lot. And for me, this is an opportunity for us. We have a great benchmark right now. We, I think this was uh, information that we need to act on. You know, basically, in my, my opinion, we determined what we did well, what we didn't do well, and what would we do differently. And, you know, you know this could have been a lot worse. And when you start looking at the numbers of... You know, the amount of water that flowed through. I think Mr. Stewart had a classic line. We talked about it, and we talked about the water, and he said the swamp did what the swamp should do. It absorbed a lot of water. There's a 100-year flood flame map. I think everybody, I guess there's a public information that somebody wanted to know. It's on the assessment website. So if you're in that flood, if you flooded this time, we're going to have more hurricanes. We're going to have more disasters. I mean, this is an opportunity for us to seize. We got, you know, information that we've you know, not really had. It's fresh in our mind. So I, 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 as soon as we came to Mr. Stewart, we've talked about this, is taking this opportunity to review what we did. And I'd also like to point out to, to, to the Sheriff's Department, because at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, there were people being, the protocol was to notify certain people in certain areas if there were potential flooding. I didn't see the sheriff blink at one time. There was no hesitation about sending people out at 11 o'clock at night if that's what had to be done. But that, I, I just I can't say that everything was seamless, but I would say that I'm, I'm very pleased with the cooperation we had with the county. Uh, I think it was a proud moment for, for the county and Mr. Stewart. Uh, I, I think everybody that was involved should be uh, you know, commended for what they did. And uh, you know, lesson learned, I think it was a great experience for the county. And, uh, you know, we were very fortunate others who aren't quite as fortunate but personally I'd like to thank those involved uh, was, you know, was a perfect note was a job well done yes thank you for, for your part and know how I know you probably didn't get five hour five hours sleep or so in three nights but you know a lot of other people were equally as right. committed so thank you for, for what all you did I'd just like to say uh, we are 
one of the really blessed counties. As you look around on TV and you can see the water, you know, that other counties in parts of South and North Carolina had. We were really one of the blessed counties. And of course, I wasn't out in it, but I heard, you know, we, and I know we did a good job. And you know, we have good, good people anyway. So, you know, that, that's what I like. Whether it's weather, any type of fatality, we always have a good team. And I would just like to say, um, I heard Miss Molly do a presentation. She did an excellent job. What I would like to see before, maybe within the next year, the list that you have published, that you have on things that you need, the families need to get prior to this time, I would like to see that list go to each one of the families, you know, in the county. And at least that would give them something to think about and try to work towards. Because I, I like to think about goals in the future. So you did a really good job. Not only you, but the whole county, I think. And it starts at the top. Thank you very much for, for doing an excellent job. Now, the only other concern that I have is a question about the courthouse. <coughs> On the ballot, there's nothing about courthouse. It says a judicial center and uh, kind of administrative building. And that's okay, but the average lay person, I, I'm just wondering about the word, and that was my thing in the beginning. So, part of that word is based on state law. The other part of it is based on if you build one building or two, yeah. it could be a separate judicial building and a separate administrative building, or if you built one, you could use the term courthouse. But if you build two, courthouse would only refer to the building of the courtroom. So, I'm saying uh, that when I'm that question was written, folks voting. Okay. Right, that question was written because no final decision had been made by the body, and okay. so it was crafted by and finalized by the committee that submitted it. And you could either accept the question or deny the question. Uh -huh. so, Thank you. Yes, but uh, that's all that I have. Mm -hmm. Here Thank you. Um, since I probably caused more havoc um, in Matthew than in coming in. in um, Florence and anybody else, I apologize. Everybody knows what I did, and, um, and we'll leave it at that. But I learned my lesson. Um, I did learn one thing, though. The federal government, several years ago, amended the flood ordinance or flood statute, uh, or uh, whatever they call it, and it used to be. You had to live in a flood zone to get flood insurance. You do not have to do that anymore. You can buy flood insurance even if you don't live in the flood zone because of, for instance, storm drains backing up and flooding your yard. Um, and so, uh, and it's that, I think it's called preferred insurance, flood, preferred flood insurance. You can get it from your local agent along with your regular policy. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive, uh, and I just throw that out that uh, that may be something that people want to look at. Uh, I'm not in the insurance business. I'm just telling you what I, I was informed. Um, concerning the courthouse situation, Ms. Thomas and I are going to have an, a town hall meeting on October 15th at the uh, Voter Registration and Election Commission Annex uh, on Cashel Street at 5 o'clock. The purpose of the meeting is to discuss and answer questions about the condition of the present courthouse and the up upcoming referendum. And we wel welcome all citizens, especially District 1 and 3, but anybody who wants to come. But that will be on October 15th at 5 o'clock in the uh, Voter Registration Office. Uh, we're holding it there instead of the courthouse because then we don't have to have um, security. Um, and um, I talked with Scott Suggs, the clerk of court, who is technically in charge of the courthouse, and he will probably be there to answer some questions too. So with that, I pass it back to the uh, to the chairman. Thank you. I also want to thank the employees, the municipalities that have been disclosed. It takes all. Everyone has to come together in a time like this to make things work, and I, I feel that the rest of the council did, did work. Um, 
we did this once down the road, we got to go straighten out. We'll, so we're learning back from now on. Um, and I came here that night that Lewis was talking about, seeing the volunteers that actually was sitting here. They volunteered to come in and work the phones and everything else. That, that just takes something else. You know, you go, you go up a step above of your callings, and we appreciate that. <coughs> and uh, we just, just appreciate our employees. And with that, I'll adjourn. Motion. So moved. Yeah.